Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to install the Victron Lynx distributor. We're gonna be talking a lot about the wire and fuse placement within the unit. We're gonna talk about the torque specs. We're gonna talk about how to make the LEDs light up on the front and different units that you can add on such as switches or shunts, how to make them latch onto the Lynx distributor as one complete unit rather than making a bunch of large cables to tie them together. All right, so in the box, we've got our RJ12 cable, a sticker in case the unit needs to be installed upside down, and our product labels with our serial number and um, product number. So first thing, we're going to unscrew the top. And to prepare the distributor for installation, first thing we're going to do is remove all of the bolts. And, excuse me, remove all the nuts. And we'll also remove the plastic tabs. So we can access the grounds. Now today, I'm only gonna be installing two wires for examples. I'm not gonna be working with the other two connections, so I'm gonna leave the nuts on those. It can be a little hard to remove these washers, so I we'll like to just turn it upside down and shake it. So now the first step in preparing the Lynx distributor is to tighten the plastic nuts. So there's a, a bolt under here. We want to make sure that the head of the bolt is snug in the plastic and doesn't come loose. So we're going to set our torque wrench to 10 Newton meters and just snug this up. Again, you really don't want to over tighten these because it's just plastic holding the bolt in. Those are good to go. So we'll attach our negative cable first. Today, for our example, we're gonna use a two watt, two watt cable with a 516 slug. And we're going to put our lug down first, then our flat washer, then our lock washer, and finally our nut. So you never want anything to go between the current carrying conductor which is the lug and the bus bar. So right, that's why we put the lug down first, attach it directly to the bus bar. So nothing in between those two causing extra resistance, extra heat. 14 Newton meters. Perfect. Now we can land our fuse here first. So for this two watt cable, I'm gonna be using a 225 amp fuse. Again, landing the fuse directly on the bus bar, then the flat washer, the lock washer, and finally the nut. We're again at 14 Newton meters. And we're tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and land our positive cable. Again, this is a two watt cable, 516 slug. So the fuse is acting as our current carrying conductor here. So again, wire right on the fuse, no washers in between the wire and the fuse. On top we have our flat washer, our lock washer, and our nut. And you'll notice your cable wanting to rotate, so sometimes it helps to hold your cable in place while you're tightening. All right, first one done. So we're gonna do one more just for example. Next, we're gonna use a two gauge wire. Again, 516 slugs. Flat washer, lock washer, 
and our nut. For our two gauge wire, I'm using a 150 amp fuse. And all of our wire and fuse sizing starts with these charts from Blue Sea Systems. So I'm gonna put a link to these in the description. These are really helpful. If you need more help than the charts can give, you can always book a consult with us or start your system design with our design consultation package where we'll make a wire diagram and a list of all the parts that you need so that you don't have to guess on all the wire sizes and fuse sizes. And I'm gonna be tightening the top nut first on the fuse. And then I'll come down and tighten the nut on the wire. So now that we've got our cables landed, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we get the LEDs on the distributor powered. So we're gonna take our RJ12 cable, and if you have a Lynx shunt or a Lynx BMS, you can plug this RJ12 cable between the Lynx distributor and your Lynx shunt or BMS. And it can exit the distributor through the hole here or the hole there. And then it'll plug into the, the same hole on your shunt or your BMS. Now, for those of you who don't have a link shunt or BMS, you need a five volt to plug into the RJ12 jack here. You need a five volt power supply, which the shunt or the BMS provide. Now, if you don't have that, on our website only is a Lynx LED adapter. And this end plugs into the RJ12 port and then the other end is gonna land on anywhere on your negative bus bar, doesn't matter which post, for the black wire and anywhere on your positive bus bar for the white wire. And that's going to provide five volt power there so your LEDs will be powered. It's completely fine to stack two or more wires on any one connector here, as long as it can physically fit. Obviously, if you've got a big four odd or two odd cable and you want to stack two of them, that is not going to fit. But if you've got maybe a four gauge or a six gauge or 10 gauge cable, it's no problem to stack two on one terminal here, as long as they fit. Whereas on the positive, you want to make sure each connection is individually fused with a few exceptions. So to do that, to add an extra slot for a positive, we can actually land an MRBF holder on this post here. There's even the option to add a dual post MRBF holder, and then we would add two fused circuits to the right side of the Lynx distributor. So we're gonna show you how to do that. First thing we'll do is remove the plastic separator. And although we were using a 13 millimeter socket for these connections, we're gonna use a 17 millimeter for the two on the sides. So for today's example, I'm just going to use the single MRBF holder and I'll put a 125 amp fuse in there. Be appropriate for probably a four gauge wire, but I'm gonna leave the wire out of it for, out of it for now. And just show you how to attach the fuse. 
So same torque spec, 14 newton meters. Your wire would go right here, right on top of the fuse. And then on top of that, you would land your flat washer, lock washer, and the nut that comes with the fuse. So that's the way you can add one connection. Again, if you want to use two fuse connections, use the dual post MRBF holder. Both of those are on our website. So now, kind of unrelated to the wiring of the Lynx distributor itself, I wanted to talk about the clean install kit. And what this is, is a bunch of spacers, just plastic spacers. These little round ones go behind the distributor. They're going to latch on right here and right there. There and right there. And now the distributor is going to sit up a bit higher. That's going to allow us the clearance to mount the Lynx, excuse me, the Victron Smart Shunt underneath of the negative post here and our easy mount switch underneath the positive post here. So to connect the spacers to the switch, look like this. They do latch on pretty nicely. They're not gonna fall off when you turn it over. This guy just gets a quarter turn, actually an eighth of a turn. Cover pops off. And we're back to our 17 millimeter socket to loosen these. It just slides right underneath it there. And those just sit perfectly at the same height now. So we'll attach them. We use the same torque spec here, 14 newton meters. And then for the smart shunt, again, it's the same 17 millimeter socket. Now you'll notice two system minus and two battery minus. This is your system minus. Your battery minus is gonna come from the battery negative directly to here. So we're gonna install it in that direction and the bolt that comes with the smart shunt is a bit too short. It won't thread in there if you have the washer and the lock washer on. So we're going to use the bolt that comes with our clean install kit. Threads in there nicely. And this is asking for a 20 newton meter Torque spec. Last but not least, if you're looking to install a class T fuse, you can uh, position that to the left of the shunt. We sell a little spacer to go underneath. I don't have one handy right now, but we will link that in the description. And you'll use the link bar that we provide to link the two together. And again, the torque spec on this is 20, and this is gonna be 20 as well. Once you're finished with the wiring, if you'd like, you can reinsert these plastic separators in this orientation. Yeah, totally not necessary to use these on most installs, but it never hurts 
to make it a little bit cleaner. So if you want your Lynx distributor to look like this, to make your install simpler and more compact, uh, remember you can pick up the clean install kit, which is the spacers and the longer bolt on our website. You can pick up the link bar and the class T spacer, as well as the LED adapter to light up the LEDs in the distributor. Uh, we also have the same spacers that can be used for adding in a power, power in to either side of your system. So give us a call if you need help picking out what you need. Otherwise, they'll all be linked in the description.